what's up hello today's review is of the book turtles all the way down by john green this is his latest novel and i just wanted to say a few things before we get started i don't suffer from the type of cyclical pervasive thoughts um, that are described in this book and so I'm a little late in making this review because before I made it, I wanted to take the time to speak with someone who does suffer from um, thought processes like that before I formed any lasting opinions about it. And I don't have the kind of lived experience that someone who struggles with those kind of thoughts does, so I can't speak to that part of the content the same way that that person could. So I'll be taking this review from as much of a purely literary perspective um, as possible, touching on um, that part of the content where appropriate, but it will not be this video's main focus. Anyone who can speak to the kind of thoughts and struggles that are represented um, in this novel, I would love to hear from you in the comments or from any mental health professionals as well. So as this is already a very popular book, um, um, the hype for it has been huge. It's John Green's first novel in about six years, and let me tell you, it does not disappoint. Um, the main character, Isa Holmes, is someone who struggles uh, from spirals such as the ones on the front in her own mind, um, and I think the most important thing to note is that she is more than those spirals. It's hard at times to see her as more than those spirals though because of the way that this book is written. It's entirely from her perspective and because we're in her head we only get the limited information that she herself can choose to provide and because of that at the beginning it sort of lacks the kind of expository information that you would come to expect um, upon starting a novel. That makes the literary experience that we're getting and the literary experience that we're looking for sort of misaligned at the beginning. It's complicated, but I think that only goes to show how complexly written this book is in a way. Good books are the ones that really stick with you after reading and kind of continue to make you keep thinking, and this one definitely does. This is a good book. With that said, onto the plot. Aza finds herself sort of Nancy Drewing the hell out of one of her old friends after um, his father, who is sort of the local billionaire, goes missing. And she is just trying to live her high school life when her best friend Daisy, um, who is courageous and outspoken and fearless and always trying new things, encourages her to investigate the murder of Russell Pickett and sort of rekindle this long time ago friendship that Aza had with his son Davis um, in pursuit of the $50,000 reward. The book continues across their investigation in what has happened to this man and how Aza continues to sort of rekindle her relationship and her friendship with Davis from long ago. And it's interesting how this whole investigation puts a strain on her relationship with Daisy. The two seem like a really unlikely pair at first to me, but it becomes clear as the book goes on that their friendship, something has been able to very strongly hold it together. And what I find most interesting about their relationship is the way that Daisy understands Aza's mental suffering, or, or actually doesn't understand her mental suffering. She does a lot of comparison to herself, as we all do, naturally, as humans. Um, she compares the way that Aza is suffering in her own mind to the way that she herself, Daisy, is suffering, primarily socioeconomically. And it's it's clear that she she becomes this acting representative of a disconnect between those two ideas. And it becomes very clear the way that that dialogue and that discourse is drawn out, that each of them is unaware how their own struggles are affecting the other, how each of their suffering is putting the other one in misery. And I think that's a really interesting story arc to have included along the lines of just, a, you know, a casual, regular high school friendship. So while that relationship is poked and stretched as the two of them start to look into what might have happened um, to Davis Pickett's father, Aza's relationship and former friendship with Davis comes back to the forefront. They re-befriend each other very quickly from the beginning, and what I find most interesting about the dynamic between the two of them is the point that Davis continually makes about wealth. His perspective against Daisy's, if you hold them up to each other, on their own personal economic situations throws into sort of really sharp focus how we don't always consider each other more deeply and how we probably ought to, to borrow a phrase, start to imagine people complexly. And in striving to do this, I think that's the second point that this book, um, through two arcs of friendship, goes to make about really working towards understanding each other. And that said, I think that brings me to my biggest critique of this book, which is not the plot but the characters themselves, and it's that they were sort of vehicles for themes as opposed to being people. They each had their own personality, but Davis felt bland in a way. I didn't understand his love of poetry. I didn't understand where that stemmed from. Daisy, for, I felt, was rehashing a lot of 
popular ideas and things that she might have read on the internet that, that didn't seem to really jive with where her mind was at and how she spent her time and how she might know those things and she seemed like the wrong mouthpiece for those kind of ideas sometimes. But circling back to the narrator, I guess, Aza does give us a limited perspective. We can only read what she thinks herself or what she perceives herself or her not self, as the case may be, depending on, on where her mind is at that day. The book really touches on how hard Aza is trying. She is trying to be a good friend, a good student, a good daughter, and all the while trying to mostly be herself. She's trying to figure out who herself is when it feels so taken over by thoughts that she can't control. And I think that that is something that all of us can connect with on some level. There is this dichotomy of how we understand each other and how we understand each other's suffering, but ultimately at the root of this, there is this one girl, this one main character who is really, really trying. And that's the most that I think can be asked of any of us is that we really do try to be who we are and to figure out what that means and what that is and to be the best us that we can be, not only for other people, but ultimately for ourselves, which is the crux, I think, of this and where she gets stuck a lot with thoughts that come to her unbidden. And as she struggles with that, she carries on through this larger arc of friendship and mystery solving, which to me ultimately feels to be the secondary plot in this, even though it is what drives the book along and stirs up a lot of other dialogues about um, who we are to other people and who we are within the greater social order along the way. Talking about this book with other folks who have read it who do sort of struggle with the same kind of thoughts that Aza also does um, really helped me to sort of put in perspective the experience that I had with it, and ultimately I think I do need to read it again. This book is full of intelligent teenagers and poignancy and classic John Green philosophization into oblivion and who we are and who we're not and sometimes how people aren't the way that we imagine them to be. I truly hope that there are more John Green books in the world to come, but I do think if this had to be the final piece in the literary canon that it would make an excellent capstone. That said, I have seen a lot of other reviews um, floating around here that do touch a bit more on the plot rather than sort of the um, philosophizations that can can be spurred from the plot. Um, and I'll link some of them below for you, the, the ones that I found that I really enjoy, if that's um, a more interesting to you than just the preponderance of ideas that have blossomed for me out of this novel. If you've got any thoughts and ideas about Turtles All the Way Down, please do feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I hope you're having lovely weeks and lovely lives. You can find everything you want to know in the box below and we'll see you very soon.